we're on. Are we live? We are live. Welcome, everybody. Um, I am no longer. I am a founder of Benefits of the Group. But you don't choose to decouple it. Uh, education is the school, right? So the self agent. Then I guess like a place and because of first of course you conduct job interviews. Businesses started by young Singaporeans. What's up everyone? Can you hear? We are the Ministry of Funny. So as to achieve happiness, prosperity, and progress for our nation. So a very curious thing is that the word prosperity did not figure in this earlier draft of the pledge by S. Rajaratnam. And instead, he, prevent, he presented a view of happiness and progress that was rooted in the community. As a result of help, helping one another, we will find happiness and progress. But if you think back to history, 1960s, uh, Singapore didn't have citizens. It's basically all the coolies and, and people who came here from China, India, Malaya. And you, of course, have to hang this concept of uh, prosperity to make them want to sink their roots here. And that's, that led to HDP policy, etc., letting you own your own home. So a lot of that is rooted in how we formed, started as a nation. We wanted to make prosperity something to aim toward. But now that we are at least a moderately prosperous nation, is it the time to, to start focusing on the, on the other parts, right? The happiness and the progress. And maybe not, not at each other's expense. These things you know, as complex as they are, right? Happiness, prosperity, progress. We really can't try to have unidimensional definitions of them. Um, the more we try to get to, you know, this single definition, this what I like to call Lord of the Rings definition, you know, the one ring to rule them all, or the one definition to rule them all. I think we run into massive problems that way. I don't think government once can help you define HPP. Uh, you have to be the ones pushing the boundaries to reimagine and redefine what HPP means at the individual level, at the societal level, at the national level, and perhaps even at the global or regional level. Today, the triple aims of happiness, prosperity and progress have been hardwired into most Singaporeans. And instead of helping one another, we have opened the door to unbridled rat race where each man for himself kind of mentality made us super competitive and less empathic to our less economically able brothers and sisters. But competition without moderation for compassion would weaken our society and turn us into a financially wealthy economy, but a poorer people. Can we explore the concept of cultural prosperity, social prosperity, and civic prosperity, where the acquisition and accumulation of these assets will allow us to create a more equitable and compassionate Singapore? It's not just happiness, prosperity and progress for oneself or another, but for our nation. I would suggest that the aspirations can be the same as what was articulated in the pledge many decades ago, but the path towards achieving them can be different. But what we do need for this to happen is for young leaders, each of you, to be at the front and centre, charting this path forward, charting the future direction. We ought not pursue material prosperity for the sake of it alone. We do so to give ourselves and our future generation more options to navigate an uncertain future. Thank you everyone for listening to us and giving us your time and making the choice to stay till the end. Yes.